Welcome to Swarf and Chips. This week we've got a takeover show with KUKA Robotics. We're going to be finding out about their range of robots, what they can do for you, and we're also heading over to their training facility in Wensbury. However, Joe, Colin and myself are joined by Catherine Johnson, who is the marketing manager for KUKA Robotics in the UK. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> okay then. Yeah, um, it's nice to see two females on the uh, sofas as well. Girl power. Like it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say something, don't you, Colin? I've got nothing to say. Then, <laughs> right, to Catherine, welcome. Now, can you give us a bit of an overview on KUKA as a company? Yeah, um, KUKA are a supplier of automated robotic solutions. Um, we supply a plethora of manufacturing industries. And we've got four offices um, in the Greater Birmingham area. And we um, employ around 500 staff. It's quite a lot. Yes. That's yes. a lot. <laughs> so KUKA are seen as providing automation for your big automated plants and things like that, production lines essentially, but that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, we can uh, implement our robotics into any kind of production manufacturing environment. So your sub, your sub contract machine shop essentially? Yes, yeah, essentially, yeah. essentially. And what are the new environments maybe that you're looking at heading towards? Um, we service all manner of uh, markets such as aerospace, um, academia, pharmaceutical, medical, um, retail, um, FMCG environments. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty them much. All. Yeah, pretty much. And everything. could someone walk up to you um, in Wensbury or give you a call? How does it all work? Do you have to go? Because you're providing a solution, aren't you, for somebody? Correct. Can they just buy a robot from you? How does it work with you? Um, if they make contact with KUKA, um, we work with a variety of system partners um, across the UK, so we're, we're decentralised. Um, we've got offices pretty much um, everywhere, north to south, and um, if someone's got a requirement where they want to implement automation, whether it be from a, um, a product throughput perspective, a quality output, or they just want to um, implement operational efficiencies, if they contact KUKA, and um, we'll, we'll put them in touch with either a system partner or we'll deal with the inquiry ourselves, dependent on the size of the solution. Yeah. What type of robots do you supply? Um, our industrial robots, they range from um, very small payload robots, such as the KR3 as an example, um, up to huge industrial robots that can lift up to a tonne. And we also have collaborative robots. So when you say collaborative, what do you actually mean by that? Um, a collaborative robot has been um, designed to work alongside human beings safely so they can share tasks. Um, in KUKA's case, it's our model, the LBR EVA, which is IIWA, which stands for Intelligent Industrial Work Assistant. Um, now, she's unique and she is truly collaborative. Now, she works um, from seven uh, axes. And within each axis, she's got a torque sensor. So, for example, if you're working alongside um, Eva and she comes into contact with you, she will sense that you're there and she will stop. And then when you move away and she realises it's safe to continue, she will then carry on working. Right. And I understand you've got certification or ISO for that? Yes. Um, there's an ISO that's applicable to all collaborative robots um, to ensure that they are actually safe to work alongside human beings. Yeah, I think the collaborative robot, it's a game changer for a small SME, just looking to do simple uh, pick and place, because the issues we hear, people don't like guarding, you know, you don't want to be guarding off in a machine and safety locks on doors, but with a collaborative robot you don't need that of course. Yes, and um, it can be mobile as well, you can actually put her on a mobile platform and move her around. Um, and another um, unique selling point of the EVA is not only can you program her, you can teach her. So you can actually guide her through a particular process and she will continue that process over and over again yeah. as you've directed her to do. Can, can, may I ask, sorry, um, you know when you're programming and it, kind of going back on what you're saying, yes. so you teach and is it learn as well? What, yes. can you Can you explain to us uh, when you're uh, programming, mm -hmm. is it coding, how does that work? And then also the other side of it when you're teaching, how does that work? Okay, in terms of programming, it's JavaScript. So it's actually a script that's put into a control pad and then run as an application. Okay. When you actually teach her to do something, um, it's, a, it's a different setting, if you like, for the robot. So you would lead her through um, a variety or a number of um, uh, ac actions within yeah. a task, and then you almost play it back as though you're pressing play on a video or, or similar. She just continued to do what you've told her to do. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's clever technology. But it's very simple because we did a video at, um, correct me if I'm wrong, AMB last year, and with Andrea Schubauer, mm -hmm. and you're just saying, 
put a robot in place and the guy didn't actually need any training and he just watched out the the people installing it and mm -hmm. he was able to do it himself yes yeah so it's very very simple yes i'm interested to learn more on about the uh, adoption or lack of adoption of the technology as a whole not just yours but other brands as well mm -hmm. um like if you look at cnc lathes nobody would buy one without a, without a bar feed which is basic automation but a vertical machine in central five axes quite often probably 80 90 percent of the time they haven't got automation mm -hmm. so why not i guess is my question um, I think there's a fear with SMEs particularly investing in automation um, or adopting automation. I think there's, um, there's, a, there's a worry that if you invest in a robot you have to uh, eliminate the manual element of your operations, which isn't the case. Um, automation is complementary, so whatever manual element may exist within your operation, if you implement automation it, it merely complements um, the procedures you have in place and it can increase product throughput. Well, great example, Gordon Lindsay. Yeah, right? well, I was going to say, I know before we go over to the training facility, I wanted to just cover a few more points and perfect example, ZND. I know you went there, Colin. Yeah, yeah. Yes. People are worried about losing staff members, but in fact, they've increased their staff members because the whole company has, you know, become more efficient and they're making more and more products all the time. And what were the figures? 400? They went 400% from... 400% increase in yes, productivity? Yeah, I think when they had... Uh, um, the manual element, so um, people producing these um, these crowd control barriers, they were producing 80 across any one shift. And when they actually put the automated welding cells, or brazing cells, should yeah, I say, in place, yeah, yeah brazing, um, they increased to, uh, I think it's 400 per yep, shift, yep. so a huge, huge increase. And that creates more supervisors, more yes. admin, more this, more And then that, you've got the onboard logistics, yeah. and, and the, um, the, the quality of the project is such now that demand has soared, and they've had to invest in... Um, extra manpower, as they as yeah. they pointed out when we're on site. Yeah. So. Really impressive. Yeah, like, I guess if yes. you bring that back to the machine environment, instead of loading, uh, which is quite quite a boring task, let's face it, loading the machine day and day, you could be looking at process improvements. Maybe look up the next job, mm -hmm. increase your throughput. So yeah, yeah, you make I mean, your job more interesting. Yeah, ultimately, you're not going to lose manpower. Engineers become operatives or operators, should I say? You've got a waterproof robot as well. How does yes. that fit into this industry and what machines could maybe that go on? Um, if you think about milling machines, um, if you have a, a lot of dust and you have a risk of explosions maybe and you need to keep that environment damp or wet then you can actually... And the lubricants, the coolants as well. Yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. So the um, the workings of the robot instead of the, um, the wiring um, coming from the back of the robot, which they usually do, um, the same way that in our hygiene machine or our hygiene variant, the actual workers of the robot are inside and then all of the parts are stainless steel, they're non-corrosive um, and all of the um, axes are waterproof. So you've, you've got a robot that can act within that particular environment and then in the other extremes you've got robots that can act um, or operate in um, really extreme heat and cold environments. So that robot will sit in the envelope of the machine tool but you've also got a a machine, well, a robot that works as a CNC machine, so you're sort of roughing, uh, polishing, deburring, and things like that. Yes, because we've produced a video to the same recently. You, we certainly did. Mm -hmm. But it's good in terms of your sort of injuries, not injuries, but RSI and things like that, is it? Yeah, if you imagine um, a milling or um, a grinding environment where you're going to have a lot of vibrations, um, there's likely to be um, issues arising from RSI claims, people being off sick, so you've got the cost of sick pay too. Um, robots eliminate that because obviously they can they can um, repeat a, an activity, um, a tedious or repetitive activity over and over again. Actually, I know we've talked about this previously, but weren't you talking about how a robot can... Um, do something with a grape or something. Yes. You've got to explain yes. this. I know, yeah. <laughs> there was an example where um, uh, a grape had been cut open and then a robot stitched it back up. Um, and you're kind of talking now about our um, LBR uh, medical um, cells. Yes, yeah. So you're talking small components, big components, very, very technical. You're just yes. used to having your grapes peeled, yes. aren't you? A bit, when you're <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Mm. Anyway, let's head over now to the training facility in Wensbury. Steve, thanks for having us along at the facility. Can you tell me more about it, please? Yeah, welcome to our facility, Colin. Um, this is our standard um, KUKA College training facility. Uh, here uh, behind me you can see uh, four KR-16 robots with our latest technology uh, controllers, KRC-4. 
Um, the facility uh, you see behind you, behind me, um, contains um, globally eyes standard equipment. So uh, we use a college certified equipment format, uh, where if you get trained in Brazil or Portugal, uh, you'll get the same uh, training here in uh, UK. So that means benefit for engineers of global uh, customers is they get trained on a standard format, and they understand uh, KUKA technology uh, regardless of what country they, they are trained in. And certified at the end? Yeah, fully certified. So uh, all of the college uh, training courses uh, are college certified um, via a, a route through Germany. Uh, so we certify uh, each and every one uh, attendees uh, within KUKA training uh, and they can take that certification and use that for professional development. Now these four robots in the cells, Chaos 16, is that right? Yeah, they're Chaos 16. The 16 uh, denotes uh, the payload. So it's a 16 kilogram payload robot with a 1600 millimeters reach. Um, these robots are used in all kinds of industries for machining purposes, for handling, uh, for training, ideal for training purposes because their scope uh, of a working envelope and also payload is ideal for uh, this type of environment. And I see down here the, uh, the control panel. Yeah, uh, the main interface for the operator um, when uh, teaching or um, uh, telling the robot what to do is via our touchscreen teach pendant. So talk me through it. Uh, so this in front of us is a uh, operator interface. So the main uh, interface for the operator uh, is a high resolution touchscreen. Uh, we call it the Takuka SmartPad. So the SmartPad contains uh, the main functionality regarding emergency stop. It has some hard keys for operator teaching uh, and functionality, but the key to it is, is a high-resolution touchscreen. So from this touchscreen, uh, the customers can uh, program the, the uh, various processes. They can look at diagnostics on the SmartPad and also generate um, uh, process-specific screens. So if they have a machining application, then all of the spindle um, variables, all of the process variables can be displayed on this um, intelligent smart screen. Okay, I understand there's a number of different applications as well, is that right? Yeah, KUKA support uh, a lot of processes and customer applications uh, through technology packages. So we have technology packages for uh, CNC applications, we have technology packages for laser, welding, uh, we have technology pack packages for gripper and spot tech. So any industry that's got a process, KUKA will uh, develop a technology package and then implement that onto the uh, standard uh, touchscreen. Impressive stuff. Now, I recognize this robot over my shoulder as well. Yeah, this is a Quantec robot. It's from our uh, high payload range of robots. It's a high accuracy um, variant. Uh, it's actually being used for a large volume uh, CNC machining project at AMRC in Sheffield. Um, so the advantage there is you've got six axis uh, man uh, manipulation of a, a CNC spindle in a large uh, volume environment using a linear track. Okay, I think you just put an article out on that, is that right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. The uh, guys at the MRC are very excited with uh, the technology they're using. Uh, KUKA are, have been involved uh, from day one on the project, uh, so we're all excited as a team that hopefully it will, it will be uh, industrialised. Steve, I recognise these. KR16s? Yeah, these are KR16s as well, Colin. Um, these are set up again, uh, fully certified cells from KUKA. Uh, the difference here is they are legacy systems. So whereas before we train our latest technology KRC4 controllers, these are KRC2 controllers. Uh, what, that ha what that gives our customers is we're still supporting installed base in the field from robots that are 10 or 15 years old. So still giving that support to clients? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. We always try and uh, support our legacy systems up to 20 years from uh, the original delivery date. So you've got a lot of KR16s here, but what about this large robot behind us? Uh, the large robot behind you is a KR60 HA robot. Uh, so it's a 60 kilogram payload robot, high accuracy. Uh, it's actually mounted on a KUKA linear track to increase the working envelope of the robot. Um, this robot system is our demonstration and uh, application cell. So we use this for customer demonstration and also process uh, um, improvements. Uh, the robot is currently configured for a setup of uh, automotive supplier uh, doing assembly tasks. Now, one thing there, you said 60 kilos, is that the maximum payload your robots will go to? Uh, no, we support uh, payloads up to 1,300 kilos. So our Titan range of robots in uh, what we call PA mode, which is palletizing mode, will actually uh, accept a payload of 1,300 kilos. Uh, but we can also uh, link four robots together and give you a uh, payload of, a t of, of up to five tons uh, in collaboration mode. Impressive stuff. And this is a six-axis robot? Yeah, six-axis industrial robot. Um, on the cell configuration we have behind you, uh, it's actually configured with eight axes. Uh, so we have a linear track and we also have an uh, external positioner. So in CNC or machining applications, the component can sit on the positioner and the robot can then manipulate around. So you've, you've essentially got a full eight-axis machining centre. Steve, I noticed that these robots are in a cell, but that's not the same with EVA. Yeah, EVA's our uh, latest collaborative robot. Uh, shall we go and take a look?
So Colin, here we have our EVA robot, which is short for Intelligent Industrial Work Assistant. Uh, these robots are used for collaborative purposes. Uh, they're used on production lines uh, without the need for any safety guarding or safety devices. The model we have here is a 14 kilogram robot with 820 millimetres reach. Okay, and last but not least, KR3? Yeah, the KR3 is one of our latest generation small robots uh, used for fast pick and place applications, primarily developed for the electronics market, but there's also other applications uh, the robot is suited for. Steve, great insight into KUKA. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, what an amazing facility you work at. Yeah, it's, it's a great facility, um, state-of-the-art training um, academy, and it's accredited as well. So if you do um, take part in a training program there, you will be accredited. Oh, brilliant. See? See? All good quality. Yeah. Now, earlier we did kind of lightly cover about uh, ZND as a company using robotics, increasing efficiency. At the end of the day, a company is there to make money. So I don't know who's going to kind of answer this, but, you know, by purchasing robotics, there is the flip side of it, of losing, uh, you know, uh, labour really, but having to save money, you know, with, you know, you said jobs can become quite repetitive. Yeah, it, it's, the, it's the jobs human beings, A, don't want to do, or maybe B, not capable of. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine a CNC operation, do you really want to employ somebody to stand there all day or all, all night loading the machine? You don't, do you? Mm. So employ a robot, even if you have to finance a robot, the finance of that robot is going to be considerably cheaper than an operator. So it's actually saving you money, not costing you money. Yeah. So financially, you know, there is that huge benefit to yeah, it as well. Yeah, the process reliability increases, component quality will increase, throughput will increase. So really, it's for people to get in touch with yourselves, isn't it? What's the best yeah. way they can do that? If they just give us a call, I mean, even if they haven't got automation at the moment, they're interested in um, improving their business efficiencies, give us a call, come to Wensbury, we'll show them the robots, we'll let them know exactly what we do, and we can take it from there, even if it's just interest in seeing what KUKA do and what our robots can do. And what events are you at this year? Uh, we're at the uh, Robotics and Automation event at the MK Arena in October. Brilliant. So, okay. Yeah, people can come along, see the robots in action, have a cup of coffee, chat to our sales guys, just say hello. In a nice, relaxed environment. Yes. Yeah. And we'll be filming there. <laughs> ah, of course. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Catherine, for joining yeah, thank us you. on Sword and Chips. Yeah, thanks for coming on. And also, as we always do, what's your favourite drink? Uh, tea. Tea. Perfect. <laughs> 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 thank you very much. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for watching this week's Swarf and Chips. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. And don't forget, as we always say, keep those spindles turning.